welcome to the breakdown video for the Minecraft Blender Geometry Node World Generator. This is going to be doing a deeper dive into the video I put up about two weeks ago. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go ahead and take a look at it. I'll leave the link here. And you can also download the file for this. It's up on my website. And it's free. So make sure to check that out if you want to mess with it and uh, give it a try for yourself. So let's get started. Let's take a look at... Um, the textures first, so we'll ignore the uh, nodes there. And you'll notice there's a couple different textures here. These were all handmade in GIMP. So um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. They're only 16 by 16, so that was pretty easy. And then they all were put onto blocks and put onto these collections. So each collection contains a single block. So you'll notice like the grass has a grass block, bedrock has a bedrock rock, etc. Um, so these are basically the foundation of everything. So everything you see here is just a duplicate of these. And um, the nodes here are a little bit difficult to dive into. So I'm going to show a simpler version, and then you can get a better idea of what's going on from there. Okay, so let's take a look at a simplified setup. Um, that'll help us better understand the more complicated mess that is the world generator. Um, so as simple as we can get it here, we have six nodes. And let's see what's going on. So we have an integer here. Um, this is the value that's creating the world size. And that's being plugged into a grid node. So this grid node is essentially just creating a series of points. Um, we're telling it how big we want the range of points to be with this size x and y. And then we're telling it how many points we want in there with the vertices x and y. One thing to note is you'll notice there's a math node here adding a value of 1. The reason for that is if we don't do that at all and just plug the raw value in, there is a gap. And this gap is equal to the width of one of these blocks. So uh, this is a percentage of that block. And the way we remedy, remedy that is just by adding one. So that adds an extra block in and it fills in that gap. The side effect of that is it creates an extra block. So you'll notice here integer is eight, but there's actually nine wide. Or if we change it to um, four, there's actually five. Um, so it's a five by five, but it's not really a big deal. Um, if it bothers you, you can use some extra math nodes to change it. For the sake of simplicity, we're just gonna leave it as is. But once we have our um, cloud, so to speak, of points, we plug that into one of the coolest nodes that has ever existed, uh, the instance on points node. And I love this because there's just so much cool stuff you can do with it. But um, yeah, we're plugging the points in. So we're basically telling this node, here are all the points that I want to create an object on. So um, it knows that there's a point here, a point here, point here, 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 etc. And then we need to tell it what we want to be on that point. So we're telling it the instances are um, the objects in this collection info node. And you'll see up here, I have the uh, collection and it's just got a cube in it. So all of the cubes in this geometry node setup are just duplicates of this cube essentially. I always just disable this um, so that cube doesn't get in the way. So a quick side note, one thing to keep in mind is size matters when it comes to the object you're instancing. So if we go to the collection here, you notice I've scaled the cube down to 0.5. It's because the grid is in terms of meters and the default cube is basically two meters across. Um, so we want it to be a meter across in all directions. Um, so you wanna make sure you scale it down because if you don't, uh, for example, if I scale this up, then we just get some weird uh, effects and um, it's an extra pain in the butt to add an extra math node to sort that all out. Um, so you can either do it with a math node or just scale the original object um, with the um, object properties panel. Either way works, but just keep in mind that it is important. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the, the simplified version. But the problem with this is we only have two axes. So we only have an X and a Y, and uh, that's not very exciting. We want some more depth to it. So 
let's see uh, how we can add a z-axis. I have the nodes all ready to go down here. I'll just plug these in. So we'll plug the points in here and out here. All right. So you've noticed that the uh, cubes are now going up as well. And the way it's doing that is it's taking the same grid and it's just duplicating it along the Z axis. So this grid is going into this duplicate elements node and it's telling it what points to duplicate. It's duplicating it and then it's just moving it on the Z axis with this combined X, Y, Z node. And then this set position is moving it. So it's offsetting it up based on um, this noise texture and then outputting it to the instance on points node. And noise textures are another super, super cool node. Um, they're just so much you can do with it. But in this case, you'll notice there's a another math node that's multiplying the noise texture. And the reason for that is we're using this factor output. And you'll notice if we plug that directly in, nothing happens. The reason for that is this factor is um, a value between zero and one. And we're essentially just multiplying by zero because it's not a whole number and it needs to be at least multiplied by one to have anything show up there. So we have to multiply it to get it greater than one. And this value that we're multiplying it by um, actually creates the height we want. So we can slide that up and down until we have a value we like. So a quick side note on noise. One of the reasons it's so useful is it's a super easy and quick way to get a lot of detail without doing much work um, because it's just random values and the real world is random. There's uh, hills and mountains and um, instead of having to model those individually, you can just have the computer do it. So there's a RGB output and a factor output. So the RGB is basically just three numbers that represent the red, green, and blue value. Factor is um, basically for height. So that's why we use factor in this case, because the zero is black and it would be a low point, And then white would be one and that's the high point. Um, so that way we can get a lot of variation and then change it really quickly. So we have our three axis controls here. And there's actually a lot we can do with this already. Um, we can play with this noise texture. Um, if you're on 4D, you can change this W value. And this is essentially like the seed. Um, so you can put that to whatever you want and it'll just create a variation. And this scale here will crank down. Um, we'll change that to like 0.1. And you notice it's a lot more um, terrain looking. Um, it looks a lot more like Minecraft with like hills and valleys and stuff. Um, and you can fiddle with that and make it a little bit more interesting. But uh, this is pretty much um, the way it works. The extra thing that the final setup has is it's got layers in it. So we can easily add layers by basically just creating another offset. So just use the same points and duplicate them. So most of this just comes down to creating points, putting an object on the point, and then moving it somewhere. So we'll go ahead and duplicate these three nodes here, the set position, collection info, and instance on points nodes. Shift D that. And we want both of these to display at the same time. So we will use a join geometry node. And we'll plug both of these in here, and this will combine both of these to the output and nothing's happened yet because we haven't given this any data to work with. So we can plug our set of points in to the geometry and you know something did happen. Uh, it's just created an extra set of cubes that are kind of clipped into here because we haven't told it where to go yet. So the way we can do that is you notice we can like manually slide this up and down. You can almost kind of get the effect we want, um, but it's no no use because if we increase the height, it doesn't move with it. So the way we'll change that is we'll plug this into the offset. And you notice it's not quite right. Uh, it's a little bit odd, but uh, at least it's moving with the scale now. 
So there's two things we'll need in order to fix this. The first is another combined XYZ node. So we'll just duplicate this. We want it to move on the Z axis. So we'll plug Z in. You notice we're almost there. We're super close. Um, the only thing is it's a little weird because you'll notice some of these cubes are just barely floating above. And that's because these aren't integers. So instead of being say like eight blocks tall, it's like 7.3. So it's just kind of hovering above. And because it's noise and it's random um, for each block, it's um, a different floating value for each one. So they're all kind of hovering at different levels. The way we can fix that is with another math node. Let's go here, plug this in and make this look prettier, move that around. And instead of adding, we're actually going to use a rounding function so we use floor. So what floor does is it takes the value from this and it rounds it down to the nearest integer that's lower. So say like 7.4 would just get rounded down to seven. Um, so it's the uh, equal to or less than integer. So um, if it's seven, it stays seven. If it's 7.1, it rounds down to seven. Um, and the reason that's useful is because now it's an integer and because it's an offset value, it's um, you'll notice we're rounding down instead of up because it's offsetting that number. So um, it's basically adding one to the existing mesh, if that makes, that was pretty poorly explained. Um, I hope that makes sense, but uh, that's pretty much it. One thing to note here is the collection info is the same. So in, the final product, these would be different. So like this would be the stone and then this one would be the grass. Uh, you can see here that just creates a nice layer. And if we unplug this, it's just on top, um, just like the grass would be. Uh, we only want the grass blocks on top of them. But um, yeah, for this demonstration, I think this does the trick just fine. So yeah, that's really all there is to it for the most part. Um, the final version obviously has more nodes, um, but it's essentially just these same principles being applied over and over again to the different layers. Um, yeah, I just recommend downloading that file if you haven't already. Um, it's a free download with the link in the description. Uh, just download that, open it up and play with it. Um, just plug stuff in random places, move the sliders, change the values, just see what happens and really mess with it um, and make it your own. If you have any questions, um, definitely leave a comment below. I um, will do my best to answer the, the questions you have and uh, make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more um, ideas for videos and uh, a lot more stuff coming out soon. So make sure you subscribe for that. Thank you so, so much for watching. Super appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.